This training exercise will get you familiar with using forcible entry tools on doors and walls. Walk forward and open the door. The next door is locked. Grab the crowbar off the bench and walk towards the door. Then, break it open. Good work. Now place the crowbar on the ground, in the glowing box. Grab the Halligan tool, walk towards the door, and break it open. Nicely done. Place the Halligan tool on the ground. Grab the axe and walk towards the door. Swing at it and smash it open. entry tool. Look for the cracks in the wall and break through it with your axe. Examine the wall for cracks and break through with your axe. Examine the wall for cracks and break through with your axe. Good work. Now place the axe on the ground in the glowing... This training will familiarize you with using forcible entry tools on windows to enter and exit rooms and buildings. Now, grab either tool on the bench, walk over to the window, and smash it open. Okay, now climb through the window into the next area. At times, the window is too high to reach, so you'll need to climb onto something to gain access. Get on top of the wood pile and smash open the window. Job done. Now climb through the window in... Good, we're almost done. Smash either. This exercise will familiarize you with using power saws to cut through locks to open doors and vents. Okay, pick up the circular saw from the ground. Okay. Pick up the circular saw from the ground. Good. Now use the saw to cut the lock on the vent ahead. You have to be careful, so aim for the indicated target. Nice. Once more, pick up the saw from the ground. Now, walk over to the garage and use the saw to cut the locks on the door. Cut both locks to open the door. This training exercise will familiarize you with using ladders. To use a ladder, you must first attach to it. Walk over to the indicated spot and connect yourself to the ladder.
Walk over to the indicated spot and connect yourself to the ladder. Walk over to the indicated spot. Okay, now reconnect yourself to the ladder and climb back down to the ground. Good. Connect to the new ladder beside you. You've equipped a Halligan tool. Use it to smash open the window. Good. Now climb through the window and enter the building. Nice. Now use the door to go outside and climb the ladder up to the roof. Okay, now climb back down and we'll continue. Okay, now climb back down and we'll continue. Job done. With this training exercise, we'll familiarize you with how quickly fire can spread. Okay, stay where you are and just watch the fire spread. Notice how fast it jumps from object to object. Now, grab a hose and put out the fire. Spray water by Grab a hose and try to put out both grease fires. Water doesn't help, does it? In fact, it makes it worse. Water and grease fire don't mix. To fight grease and chemical fire, you need to use a portable CO2 extinguisher. Grab an extinguisher and aim it at the base of both fires. Sweep the extinguisher side to side on the flame Make sure you put it out. Good work. 
When out on calls, look for different types of flames so you can be ready for any grease or chemical fires you run into. This training exercise will familiarize you with how to effectively fight a fire using the hose aiming interface. All right, grab a fire hose and enter the door in front of you. Fires out. Take your attack hose into the next room. Fires out. You may have noticed the sparks coming from the lamp on the table. These sparks can and will reignite the fires after you put them out. This can create a dangerous situation of potential fires in the area of the ship. There it comes. Since electricity will restart the fire multiple times, the best way to deal with electrical fires is to cut the main power by binding and using the building fuse box. So, instead of wasting water on an electrical fire, walk over to the fuse box on the wall and turn off the electrical support. Good. Put out the fire. You already know how to deal with grease fires. Grab an extinguisher and put those fires out. You'll notice that both the attack hose and the CO2 extinguisher use the same interface to help you put out fires as efficiently as possible. Okay, fires out. Job done. This exercise will get you up to speed on smoke, how it affects your vision, and how to effectively clear it. Smoke is dangerous and can seriously harm you, which is why you'll always be equipped with an SCBA system to ensure you can breathe in any situation. When going into a smoke-filled area, be sure to use your helmet-mounted flashlight. It'll really make a difference. Turn it on now before entering the building. Smoke rises. Getting below the neutral plane of the smoke keeps you in cooler air and improves your vision of the area. Stay below the smoke level by crouching. The best way to deal with smoke is to eliminate. Venting a room allows the smoke to clear and makes it easier for you to see any dangers. This will really help when doing search and rescue out. Now, open the door and enter the next area. It's full of smoke. Stay crouched so you have the maximum amount of sight. Okay, 
You know the drill. Stay low and open all the windows to clear the smoke. Now, open the door and enter the next area. Okay, we're going to take a different approach for this room. A smashed window is just as effective as an open window. If you need to vent smoke but run into a locked window, don't let that stop you. Grab a tool off the bench and smash both windows. Nice work. The smoke will clear out in no time. In this next phase, we'll take a slightly different approach. If you still have the forcible entry tool, use it to smash open one or both of the windows. If you don't have a tool, grab one off the bench. Good. Now enter the building by climbing through the window. It's smoky in here too. Remember to stay crouched to improve your visibility as the smoke clears from the window you just smashed. Now, open the door and enter the next room. Okay, you know the drill. Stay low and open the window to clear the smoke. You did it. Now we're going to learn about one of the most dangerous situations you'll ever encounter. A backdraft. Backdrafts often surprise even experienced firefighters. Backdrafts occur when the oxygen within a room has been used up, and then more oxygen is rapidly reintroduced into the area. This is caused by opening a door or window in an oxygen-depleted environment. When backdrafts occur, fire explodes out of the door or window and can become a fast-moving fireball, causing damage to anything in its path, and can even badly injure you. Okay, enough talk. Now we're going to show you a backdraft event. Know what to look for in a potential backdraft situation. First, walk over to the window on the left and look into the room. You'll notice that the room is full of smoke. And there are no visible signs of flame. This indicates that the room is above its upper flammability limit. This means that the gas or vapor in the air is capable of producing a flash fire. Just as an ignition. and into the next room to extinguish the fires there.
out the fires in this room, then go through the door and into the next room to extinguish the fires there. Good work. Now notice that the next locked door has signs of a potential backdraft. Do you see the smoke at the base? Do you hear the pulsing sound? Okay, the door's been unlocked. Like last time, open the door, but remember to immediately back away from it to avoid the backdraft. Okay, you know what to do. Put out the fires in this room, then move through the door to get to the next room so you can extinguish the fires in there. Put out the fires in this room, then move through the door into the next room and extinguish the fires there. Good work. As I said before, even experienced firefighters can be surprised by backdrafts. So pay attention to any closed door that you approach and look for signs of backdraft. It could save your life. This training exercise will familiarize you with setting up attack hoses to fight fires and show you how to connect a fire truck to a hydrant water supply. First, we'll establish a water supply line. This ensures you never run out of water when fighting fires. Now, walk over to the indicated compartment on the truck and grab a supply hose. The supply hose is the yellow one. Okay, now, look directly at the connector on the truck. You'll notice that you first need to remove the cap from the connector. So... Well done! You now have a supply line connected to the truck and will have a continuous flow of water for fighting fires. You only need one supply line connected to the truck, but to show you that there are multiple points on the truck you can connect a supply line to, we'll go ahead and connect another supply line. Walk over to the back of the truck and grab a supply line. Head over to the indicated connector on the other side of the truck and connect the supply line to it. Like before, remove the cap, unroll the hose, and attach the hose coupler to the truck's supply line connector. Good! Just like before, grab the coupler on the ground and walk over to the indicated fire hydrant and connect it to the hose. Remember to remove the cap... Good. Now walk over to the indicated part of the truck where you can connect the attack hose. They're normally next to the water supply line connectors. As with the supply line, you'll need to first remove the cap from the truck, unroll the hose, and then connect the hose coupler to the truck. Nice. We're going to need a nozzle for the attack line. The nozzle allows you to increase or stop the flow of water as needed. Now, pick up the coupler from the ground and walk to the back of the truck. Open the lower compartment and swap the hose coupler with a nozzle.
Pick up the coupler from the ground and walk to the back of the truck. Open the lower compartment and swap the hose coupler with a nozzle. Now that you have a nozzle, look directly at the coupler on the ground and attach it to your nozzle. It worked. All right. We started a huge pallet fire. Utilizing the
Fire's out. Job done. With this training exercise, you'll give commands to your squad mates. This will allow others to complete tasks for you while you focus on other objectives. Have a look at the upper right corner of your screen. You can see the AI indicator along with the associated shortcut. Point at the circle on the ground and press the shortcut for the AI that you've just seen in the upper right corner. The AI character will now walk to the indicated location. Yes, sir. Good. Now direct the AI to the second circle, followed by the third. Yes, Commander. Well done. You've just learned how to give go-to commands. Yes, Commander. Now call the AI to your position. The AI will now follow you. I'm on it. Yes, Commander. Yes, sir. Walk along the waypoints. As you can see, the AI is following you in close proximity as you move around. As you can tell, the AI is very closely following your movements. I'm with you, boss. Lead the way. Go ahead and instruct the AI to wait. Let's continue with the final part. Two victims need help in that building. Your mission? Rescue them. Head through the door and into the building. I'm on. I'm on. Can't get there, boss. The door's locked. Instruct your AI to equip a Halligan tool and come to your location. Yes, Commander. All right, you can instruct the AI to open the door for you. AI can interact with all context-sensitive objects like doors, windows, victims, and many others. Your crosshair will change when you aim at objects your AI squadmate can interact with. Press the AI shortcut while aiming at the door to command the AI to now follow the indicated on-screen interact. The AI squadmate will grab a hook and start combat and fire. Door is open, boss! Yes, sir. Let the AI quench the fire. Okay, boss. I'll put that fire out. There's another fire in the next room. Command the AI to deal with the fire there, too. Give another go-to command to send the AI into the room with the fire.
Well done. All fires are extinguished. Don't forget to get both victims to the paramedics. Use the AI shortcut again while aiming at the victim. While the AI is bringing the victim to safety, they're no longer available for other commands because their main priority is getting the victim to the paramedics. Go ahead and carry the other victim to the paramedics yourself to finish this training mission. Yes, sir. Victim safe, boss. This training exercise will familiarize you with how to use ladder trucks and aerial arms to attack fires from above and to rescue victims in elevated locations. Before extending the truck's ladder, we must first stabilize it and ensure that the truck will not tip over with the ladder boom extended. Walk over to the indicated control panels and extend all the truck's outrigger arms. While deployed, the outrigger arms simultaneously bypass the vehicle's movable suspension and gives the truck an overall wider stance. Make Walk over to the indicated areas and engage the ladder boom controls. Good. The ladder arm offers you three degrees of movement. Up, down, left, right, and forward, backward. Extending the ladder arm forward and backward effectively lengthens and shortens the length of the ladder. Now, use the indicated controls and move the ladder in the up and down directions. Now. Good. Now, use the indicated controls and move the ladder in the left and right directions. Good. Now. All right. Now. Use the indicated controls and move the ladder in the forward and backward direction, making the ladder length longer and shorter.
Okay, you've saved one victim. Now position the bucket near the other indicated roof and wait for the victim to reach the bucket. Okay, you've saved one victim. Now position the bucket near the other indicated roof and wait for the victim to reach the bucket. Okay, you've saved one victim. Now position the bucket near the other indicated roof and wait for the victim to reach the bucket. Okay, you... Press the indicated button now to switch back to controlling the bucket movement to try it out. When you've relocated the bucket to a better location, switch back to controlling the nozzle and extinguish the fires. Fires are out. Job done. Congrats! 
You've completed the firefighter training course and are ready to handle any situation so you can save as many lives as possible. Feel free to return to the training facility to practice your skills if you need help with the more difficult emergency calls you may encounter. Remember, we train today to be safe tomorrow.